guys, it's a good day. We are in a 2020 Shelby GT350R. This thing is awesome. We're gonna be track testing it in a couple of days. So the purpose of today's video is to give you guys an idea of what this thing is like to drive on the street. This GT350R has a very purpose-built and driver-focused cabin. Alcantara steering wheel, flat bottom, a beautiful shifter. You've got your oil pressure and oil temp gauges right here dead center. There's also lots of information here in the center display. You can see your engine and trans oil temp, engine oil pressure, AFR, lots of good information to keep an eye on when you're out on track. You can also see your tire pressure. There are track apps, uh, accelerometer testing. We have these wonderful Recaro bucket seats. They're very comfortable, all manually operated for weight savings. And uh, it's kind of strange you have carbon fiber-like stitching on the side of the seat. Not sure seats needed carbon fiber stitching, but I think it still looks pretty cool and racy nonetheless. They're very comfortable and very supportive. We have a couple of different exhaust modes, open and closed. Here's normal. Pretty subdued until you get deep into the throttle. And then sport, your neighbors are gonna love this one. <laughs> I think we're gonna leave it in sport for most of this video. This GT350R is painted in Wimbledon white and it has the heritage package, which means it gets the stripes. Those stripes are about two grand. The R package is about 13 grand, but that includes carbon fiber wheels, which are about $20,000 on their own for a set of four. And you get a more aggressive rear spoiler and front splitter. This thing I've heard makes more downforce than a Porsche GT3 RS. That's pretty amazing. I cannot wait to get this out on track and see what it's like at speed. It's very rare that you actually get into a streetcar that you can feel the downforce with. Under the hood, we have a 5.2 liter V8, flat plane crank. It makes 526 horsepower and it revs to 8,250 RPM. It just sounds like a big liter Ferrari engine. Definitely the heart of this car and my favorite thing about the GT350. Otherwise, it's pretty standard Mustang. You get a decent amount of trunk space. No spare tire, weight savings. And the GT350R has a rear seat delete. I'm sure you can get rear seats undeleted, but uh, for now, that's gonna save just a little bit more weight and give you that extra performance. Personally, I'd probably swing for the extra practicality of the GT350 but uh, this R is very, very cool. We're on super sticky, super wide Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires. We have 315s in the back and 305s in the front. Monster Brembo brakes. All right, that should cover the basics. Let's get out on the road. Show you the reverse camera while we're here. This is one of those cars that is fun to drive in parking lots and fun to drive in racetracks. It really does the whole gamut. It just snarls through every driving situation. Sounds good. I'm so glad that Ford has kept this sweet six-speed manual for these cars. We have 
MagDag dampers that adjust depending on your drive mode. We have normal, sport, and track settings for them. We'll probably leave it in normal and sport today. And that will also automatically change the exhaust note, though you can switch it separately from the drive modes down here. play this engine like an instrument and you have so much to play with. I still have another thousand RPM and I just shifted it 7200. Just awesome. definitely feel like you are in a track ready machine. It's pretty comfortable, it's pretty livable, but it doesn't let you forget what you're driving. These Pod Sport Cup 2s are incredibly sticky, so sticky that they pretty much hold on to every road surface. There's a lot of tram lining from the front end. That also probably has something to do with the width. The brakes are super touchy. Steering is a little bit tighter than it is in just about every other Mustang. Though I wouldn't mind more feel. Mustangs in the last few years have been pretty numb with regards to driver feedback. This GT350R is better, but it still could use some improvement in that realm. Six gear is super tall, so you get into six and that's just your cruising gear. You're not really going to get much acceleration out of this car at 2,000, 2,500 RPM. It's interesting because this engine revs so high, all the power is in the higher registers. And you really don't get much acceleration or torque below 4,000 RPM. kind of a different experience compared to any other muscle car or Mustang that people are used to driving. You really do have to rev this thing out. I was talking to an instructor at the GT500 drive program and he said he would physically slap people's hands away from the shifters to keep them from short shifting. And that's kind of what I have to do mentally when I drive this car. This becomes so tame and quiet in normal mode. And then once that valve opens, it's a really big difference. Even in normal mode though, 
once you give it some revs and get into the throttle, it'll open up and you can definitely hear it just as much as you can in sport. Maybe not as aggressively, but it's a really nice balance. Super stealthy, super quiet. It's kind of funny though because you can't really. See, I don't. I don't know if there's a way to start this GT350R in quiet mode. There's always just this really loud blip on startup, on cold start, and then it'll soften up. Guys, this thing is a joy. It's really, really fun to drive. There's some compromises here with the GT350R. The front splitter scrapes just about everywhere. You have to be really careful about your driveway entrances. Basically, just approach everything at a very aggressive angle and you'll be fine. But for that downforce, that's a compromise that you're gonna make with one of these cars. The GT350 has a much more usable and approachable front end. Uh, that's a lot more daily driver friendly. While we're just cruising here on the highway, let's go in and listen to this B&O sound system. that with the soundtrack from the exhaust oh this is a joy to drive every day I'm gonna get some gas because I'm almost out uh, like I said a tradition when filming GT 350s and if you guys want to keep watching I want to keep driving this we'll see you in a minute
This GT350R is all about the sound. It's kind of like the Lexus LC500 where you just want to listen to the exhaust all day long. I mean, that is the heart of this car is this 5.2 liter flat plane crank. It's a monster. I love it. Mustang, I'm left a little bit numb at first. They're big, they're heavy, they're a little bit unruly. The steering doesn't quite feel as connected as just about any other car. It's, it's a different sensation. But then the more I drive them, I start to understand and I start to get these cars and get into a rhythm with them. There is a different driving experience here from most performance cars. You know, the Mustang has a unique feel, and um, a lot of the enjoyment factor is the sound and is the exhaust note. And I think there are some areas here where Ford could really improve upon. Steering feel, it's kind of a, it's a vague guessing game. Once you load it up and once you start cornering with it, it becomes a lot more precise and there's a lot more communication with what's going on in the front tires. But just driving around normally, it's kind of anyone's guess. I think for the price, the GT350 is probably the best Mustang you can get. The GT500 is another level of insanity and capability, but it's almost supercar levels of performance. And uh, a car like that is a little bit more unattainable for most people. And something like this is just slightly more within the realm of affordability. The R definitely takes things up a notch and uh, the extra $13,000 for the R package is a pretty tough pill to swallow. But that said, if you're gonna be doing a lot of tracking and uh, this is gonna live on a racetrack, it's probably a worthy upgrade. Otherwise though, if you're just gonna be daily driving this or just enjoying it on the street and doing the occasional track day, the standard GT350 will be more than enough to serve you well for your needs. Um, anyway, this thing is awesome. 
it's probably my favorite Mustang in uh, recent years that I've ever driven. They've, uh, Ford has knocked it out of the park with this thing. And it will be sad to see it go because they just announced that they're discontinuing it. Stay tuned for the track test in a couple days. Can't wait to see what this thing can do on a race course. Um, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.